please rise and face the cross at the rear of the sanctuary. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the name by which our God reveals himself. This is the name he has given us in baptism. In this name, we have gathered these 125 years. In this name, we gather today to celebrate his gracious act. You may be seated, and I'd like to invite up the Kids Praise Sunday School Choir.
A reading from Exodus chapter 14 and 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and all that night the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. The waters were divided and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and on their left. That day the Lord saved Israel from the hands of the Egyptians and Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. And when the Israelites saw the great power the Lord displayed against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and put their trust in him and in Moses, his servant. For I do not want you to be ignorant of the fact, brothers, that our forefathers were all under the cloud and that they all passed through the sea. They were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. They all ate the same spiritual food and drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that accompanied them. And that rock was Christ. As God delivered Israel from bondage through water, so he has delivered us from slavery to sin through the waters of baptism. Today, we remember and celebrate all whom God has called to be his from this place. Since Zion Lutheran Church was founded, 2,974 people have been baptized here. We praise God for his gracious action in baptism. We thank you. second reading is taken from Numbers chapter 14 and the following. That night, all the people of the community raised their voices and wept aloud. All the Israelites grumbled against Moses and Aaron, and the whole assembly said to them, if only you would have, if we would have died in Egypt or in the desert. Why is God bringing us to this land only to let us fall by the sword? Our wives and children will be taken as plunder. Wouldn't it be better for us to go back to Egypt? And they said to each other, we should choose a leader and go back to Egypt. Moses said to the Lord, then the Egyptians will hear about it. By your power, you brought these people up from among them. Now may the Lord's strength be displayed, just as you have declared. The Lord is slow to anger, abounding in love and forgiving sin and rebellion. Yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children for the sin of the fathers in the third and fourth generation. In accordance with your great love, forgive the sin of these people just as you have pardoned them from the time they left Egypt until now. And the Lord replied, I have forgiven them as you ask. God's people, Israel, were not perfect. They grumbled and complained, but they asked God's forgiveness and in grace he gave it. We here at Zion are likewise imperfect people and each week we have honestly acknowledged our sinfulness as we do also this day. For we know that in Christ we have forgiveness. Gracious God, we know that we are in bondage to sin. We complain in spite of your gracious provision. We grumble in spite of your gracious prison. We grumble in spite of your love. We rebel against your will. Forgive us, we pray, our sinful acts and thoughts. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, grant us your Spirit that he may renew our hearts and inspire us to service. God has forgiven your sin. And as he did it for Israel of old, he also does it. So not because we merit it, we don't. No, he does so solely 
for the sake of Jesus, who died for us that we may live. So now, as he has done from this chancel of Zion Lutheran Church at two locations, over 10,000 times, I announce the grace of God to you, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and God's people said, Thanks be to God. Amen. Exodus 15. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. The horse and its rider he has hurled into the sea. 
The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. He is my God. I will praise him, my Father's God, and I will exalt him. Please rise. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Give yes. thanks to him. God has blessed us and brought us to this time. God has blessed us and brought us to this place. God has caused his name to dwell in our midst. God has stirred our hearts and made us glad. God has shown us his glory and his mighty word. God has shown us the way of truth and life. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Give thanks to him. For 125 years, God has nourished and fed us. For 125 years, God has shown us his grace. For 125 years, God has given himself in word and sacrament. For 125 years, God has empowered us with his Holy Spirit. For 125 years, God has made us his witnesses in the world. For 125 years, God has placed us in loving fellowship with one another. Praise the Lord for 125 years. Praise him for 125 more. Praise the Lord forevermore. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Deuteronomy chapter 5. Moses summoned all Israel and said, Hear, O Israel, the decrees and laws I declare in your hearing today. Learn them and be sure to follow them. The Lord our God made a covenant with us at Horeb. 
It was not with our fathers that the Lord made this covenant, but with us, with all of us who are alive here today. The Lord spoke to you face to face out of the fire on the mountain. And at that time I stood between the Lord and you to declare to you the word of the Lord because you were afraid of the fire and did not go up on the mountain. And he said, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt and out of the land of slavery. As God spoke of old to Israel, so he speaks to us today in his word. From this place, the scriptures have been read over 10,000 times in worship at God's house. We give thanks for the same word as it continues to come to us. Please rise. The gospel lesson for today is from the gospel of St. Luke, the 19th chapter. Jesus entered into Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was very wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but being a short man, he could not because of the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed up a sycamore tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached that spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay in your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, he has gone to the, the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, 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 here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor, and I have cheated. If I've, if I have cheated anyone out of it, out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. And Jesus said to him, "Today, salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost." And maybe see it.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God the Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. First, I'd like to take this opportunity. If anyone uh, that served in any way for the anniversary committee, please stand. Will you please, if you're in the house here, please stand if you were involved in any way. Let's give them a round of applause. You're not standing over there. You're not standing. Also, a special thank you for the committee ch to choose me and give me the honor to stand up here and, and present God's word to you today on this very special day. The text that I chose is Psalm 90, verse 1 to 4. Lord, you have been our dwelling place through all generations. Therefore, the mountains were born, and, or you brought forth the whole world from everlasting to everlasting. You are God. You turned people back to dust, saying... Return to dust, you mortals. A thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by, or like a watch in the night. We gather to celebrate anniversaries, anniversaries such as this, this 125-year anniversary of Zion Lutheran Church. We gather so that we do not forget. We do not forget. And in not forgetting means that we remember. And in remembering we remember the chronicling of our history here at Zion Lutheran Church in this place. Remembering then that early in the 1870s, there were a number of German Lutherans, especially a group that have moved here from Mecklenburg, Germany, that settled near Wall Lake in Minnehaha County. And then a decade later, about 10 years later, a larger group from Mecklenburg gathered here in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And because missionaries in the southeast corner of the state had to travel down to Sioux Falls in order to provide worship service opportunities. Uh, there was a, uh, Sioux Falls was, was a, a, a preaching station. It became a preaching station in those early days. And the reverend that came down was from Centerville, a reverend Andrew Mueller. And he conducted his first service in houses in the spring of 1980. And for two years, he continued to do church in Sioux Falls as he traveled to this preaching station. In fact, Pastor Mueller had this vision. He wrote this. Uh, Donna Creighton and Judy uh, Schmuck found this in our archives. Pastor Mueller wrote this back in 1880. He said, This weak little plant will yet grow into a mighty tree under God's blessing. And under its branches, many immortal souls will find a spiritual home. Isn't that cool? And here we are today. But back in July 16th, 1882, there was a man named Reverend E. Stark, and he came from Trinity Lutheran Church in Wall Lake Township, and he was called to serve the preaching station here in Sioux Falls. And then in 1989, the Minnesota Dakota District, they purchased a lot at 16, 618 South Spring, or 14th in Minnesota. And the Reverend Busher, as he's out on the board in the hallway in the atrium, passing over into the office wing, he was installed as the first resident preacher here at Zion Lutheran Church, October, or August 7, 1889. And today we gather for the formal organization of Zion Lutheran Church, which was organized on October 1, 1889. And to give us some perspective then of the year of 1889, U.S. President Cleveland, he signed the bill to admit South Dakota, North Dakota, Montana, and Washington states to the Union in 1889. Charlie Chaplin was born in 1889. He was the star of mostly uh, of silent films. In 1889, Thomas Edison showed his first motion picture, although silent. And then during the next year, in 1890, Zion, this newly organized congregation, it was incorporated. And then two years later, Zion joined the Missouri Synod. But back then, it wasn't called the Missouri Synod. Back then, in 1890, it was called the Evangelical Lutheran Synod of Missouri, Ohio, and other states. These were happy and prosperous times for Zion Lutheran Church. There were growing times for the congregation. The city of Sioux Falls numbered 15,000 people already. Then came the panic, and I could not find what the panic of 1893 was here in Sioux Falls. But in 1893, there was a panic. Businesses closed. Families moved away. 
and Zion lost a third of its total membership. There were 30 charter members of Zion Lutheran Church, and in 1895, eight remained. It was during the pastorship of Pastor Pashi, his term as pastor, where Zion Congregation started a Lutheran school. Teacher Henry Hartman was called to teach the 20 students. And in 1913, 43 students were enrolled at the school. That was the highest number ever attained in the school's existence. And then as time traveled on, space became a problem, and the noise of Minnesota Avenue became an issue. So they thought, it's time to move on. So in 1948, the congregation purchased six lots where we're on today. And then three years later, the architectural firm of Harold Spitznagel and Associates was engaged to draw the plans of the church and the parish hall. And the plan was accepted by the congregation in 1952 with groundbreaking held on October 25th, 1953. May 16th, 1954, the cornerstone was laid, as you see out in the east entry of the atrium. On March 27, 1955, the new church edifice was dedicated, where you are sitting today. To give us some perspective of the year 1955, President Eisenhower, he raised the minimum wage from 75 cents an hour to a dollar an hour. In 1955, the Lawrence Welk Show premiered on ABC. And in 1955, the Congress ordered all U.S. coins to bear the motto, In God We Trust. Did you know that didn't happen until 1955? In Zion's history, the stained glass windows that you see beside you were dedicated in 1987. The atrium addition, out our fellowship area, was dedicated on December 2, 2003. And our beautiful sanctuary that we're sitting in today was rededicated after the remodel, the RRR, Renew, Renovate, and Rejoice campaign, we called it, on January 29th, 2012. Don't you see how our loving triune God has blessed this congregation for 125 years? And today, many members, many friends of the congregation, we converge here to praise God and to thank Him. And may the Holy Spirit open our, our, our hearts and open our minds to his word today as we are directed to the thought of, O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. It's from our Lutheran service book, hymn 733, from the first verse. The psalmist says in Psalm 90, verse 2, Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the whole world, from everlasting to everlasting you were God. See, before the world... Before our, our globe came into being, who was there? Who was there? Our eternal God was there. Right? From everlasting to everlasting. He had no beginning and he had no end. From Psalm chapter 90, verse 4. A thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by. Or like a watch in the night. Time doesn't exist for God. Time is beyond, uh, God is above it and God is beyond time. Psalm 90, verse 1, Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. God is our refuge. God is our strength. He is our protection. Think of Noah. Noah and his immediate family under divine direction, they found refuge in the ark when the waters were rising and it took them through the flood. Think of the Israelites as God was their refuge as they wandered through the wilderness and God was their protector. He provided passage through the Red Sea. And then he caused the water to collapse in on the Egyptians. Remember the protector and savior of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. You see, it's that same God whom the early settlers, the Christian settlers, came to this area. That's the same God whom they worshipped. It's the word that they wanted to hear, that they desired to hear, and to whose honor and glory they built Zion Lutheran Church 125 years ago. 125 years. It seems like a long time ago to us mortals. But it is, however, less than a speck, less than an instant of a second compared to the immense, incomprehensible history and eternity of God. Yet God guided and protected Zion through all of these 125 years, all kinds of memories we have here in this place. Think of all the different staff 
that has come through Zion Lutheran Church. The youth workers that have come through Zion Lutheran Church. The vicars that have come through Zion Lutheran Church. Think of the, the Wather League of an earlier day. Church bowling leagues. Potlucks. Softball leagues. Picnics. And all of those hundreds and hundreds of other events woven into the fabric of this congregation's life. And some of the memories are, are joyous. 1,509 marriages celebrated here at Zion Lutheran Church. 2,974 baptisms administered. 2,095 sons and daughters standing tall on Confirmation Day pledging to suffer all, even death, to deny the faith and His Word. And then there were those glorious Easter celebration services and the glowing of the candle lights on Christmas Eve. Other memories might bring a tear to your eye. So maybe you're thinking of a loved one that has labored in this place called Zion Lutheran Church and is no longer here and is at home in heaven, in the heavenly Zion. There's been so many seasons here at Zion, I'm sure. Times of harmony, times of controversy, times of dissension, times of disappointment, times of gain, times of loss. And there were times of concord or concordia where all were moving in one as a unit, one under God's word, one heart, one mind, one mouth as we proclaim God and Lord. The psalm says in Psalm chapter 90 verse 3, you turn people back to dust, saying, return to dust, you mortals. 919 funerals have been performed here at Zion. Many other people have moved away, maybe because of illnesses or jobs or some other circumstances. But during the 125 years, we stand strong. Over 125 years, think about it, there's been two world wars. There's been innumerable other wars and conflicts that have come and gone over the 125 years. There's been the Great Depression that seemed to linger on and, and many recessions that followed. There's been droughts, there's been epidemics. Other parts of the world, there's been earthquakes, floods, and fires. Here, there's been dust storms and blizzards that have pounded the church. Yet by the grace of God, Zion stood and Zion still stands. So now today we stand here together and celebrate 125 years. Think of the Israelites wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. God gave them spiritual nourishment just like He has given Zion spiritual nourishment for almost three times that long. 125 years. There are stories of the 22 pastors that have served here in the past 125 years. Stories of their capabilities. Stories of their quirks. Some of us are here today. But every one of them was placed here by the Lord. Placed here by the Lord to share His gifts. His gift of sermon, His gift of sacrament, His gift of hope and compassion, His gift of law and gospel to us as people. And some of them are no longer here. And we glory in the ones that could not make it today too. Young and old have heard God's word pass through these men gathered here today. Your pastors. The Bible speaks of sin and the Bible speaks of death. Yes, it does. From Romans chapter 3, verse 23, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 5.12, therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because of sin. Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death. And we know that God's Son led a perfect life. He paid the painful price for our transgressions. He bled to cleanse us from all sins that we might live. But the Bible speaks of hope. The Bible speaks of mercy, and the Bible speaks of life as well. Mark chapter 10, verse 45. The Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give His life as a ransom for many. Luke 19, 10. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. 
These are the words of comfort that we find in God's Word. God has given Zion 125 years of that blessing. So this day, dear friends, hear the words that Jesus speaks to us, that we might know the truth, that He is the one sent by the Father for us and for our salvation. Jesus crucified for the sins of the world, raised from the dead. He has purchased and won you to Himself. Don't you see that Zion belongs to Him? And don't you see that we belong to Him? And don't you see that you belong to Him? For Zion's legacy of this congregation's good and godly heritage, we give thanks to God. And in embracing the future, which also comes through His Son's empty tomb, we look ahead at a future. We look ahead at our hope for the years to come. See, the Lord, dear friends in Christ, has brought us to this present time, here together. And I want you to know that it's a new time. And in this new time, as we look back in time, we see wonderful things, 125s of histories. But sometimes when we look back, we look, we look back to find out what we need to do in the present. But I think in this new time, we need to look ahead to find out what to do in the present. Friends, we're living in a new time when major shifts in our culture have occurred. Yes, they've occurred in our time, in the culture that we're living in today, which has reshaped the present and the future for a very, very long time. So as we look forward to find out what to do in the present, we find Jesus inviting us out. He is inviting us out into His way his truth, and his life. You see, these cultural shifts that have occurred in our time, they present possibilities for you and me. Possibilities for you and me to live out our faith in both word and deed as God is inviting us out to serve him in mission. He's inviting us, you and me, to serve his heart. And his heart is to seek and save the lost. We live these possibilities out in this new time as we bring to each other in this place, in the community of Christ, and outside these walls, hope, compassion, and the community of Christ. Don't you see that in this new day, Jesus invites every one of us to live and to serve with Him in this mission, seeking and saving the lost, centered in the sin-forgiving cross of Jesus Christ, where He paid the sins for all people of all time. And then three days after he arrived in the grave that was sealed and guarded, he walked out alive. Victory, victory over sin and death was God's stamp of approval. That Jesus' sacrifice on the altar of the cross was acceptable to him. That it was the victory over the grave. And don't you see, dear friends in Christ, we live that victorious resurrection life in this new time. Today, tomorrow, and forever. What an incentive, I pray. What motivating words, I hope. But not only to rely on the divine helper, but also to work for him in the years ahead. Why? Because we have that hope in him that lies ahead for us. Again, from our sermon hymn, Lutheran Service Book 733. Verse 1, the whole verse reads, O God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast, and our eternal home. And we jubilate. Yes, I said jubilate. It's a word, look it up. We jubilate together with St. Paul from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57, when he writes these words. He says, Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We'll stand and sing the creed together. In God we believe.
be seated. Exodus 25. The Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites to bring me an offering. You are to receive the offering for me from each man whose heart prompts him to give.
glorify God to be the holy fellowship of believers in the body of Christ, sharing, caring, working in the world, and living in the hope of the world to come. Our eyes look back with thanksgiving. Our eyes look forward and hope to a future that is to come. Therefore, with thanksgiving for the past and hope for the future, let us dedicate ourselves and our lives to the mission which God gives us as the Church of Jesus Christ. Oh my God. forgiven our sins, and you have sent your Holy Spirit to heal and comfort our hurts, our sorrows, our infirmities, and our losses. Continue to empower us with your Spirit, O Lord, that we might proclaim your gospel to all people. We dedicate our lives to your service. Help us to witness to the good news of Jesus Christ and all that we do and say. We dedicate our lives to your service. Show us how we might give care and support to the needy, love and mercy to the broken and forlorn. We dedicate our lives to your service. Show us new ways of loving one another and those around us. We dedicate our lives to your service. Break down those prejudices and barriers which divide us and make us all in one in your Son, Jesus Christ. Hear our prayer. Renew us by the Spirit given at our baptisms so that we might be challenged to move beyond our ruts, our apathy, and our anxieties of inadequacy. Grant that we may continually grow in the Spirit and in the ministry that you give us as members of your royal priesthood, the priesthood of all believers, so that we may carry out our mission of service and love. Continue to comfort, heal, and lift up the broken and inflicted among us. By the promise of your presence, bring us your healing love. Bring us at last to the joy of your eternal kingdom, where with the faithful of this church who have gone before us and with all your saints, we may evermore praise your name. Blessed Lord, Draw our hearts to you, guide our minds, fill our imaginations, control our wills, and make us holy yours. Use us as you will, to the glory of your holy name and in the welfare of your people, through your Son, Jesus Christ, one Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Congregation may be seated.
By day the Lord went ahead of them in a pillar of cloud to guide them on their way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, so that they could travel by day or night. Neither the pillar of cloud by day nor the pillar of fire by night left its place in front of the people. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house in the same way let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. And we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Ephesians chapter 3. For this reason... I kneel before the Father from whom his whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all that we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. may be seated and we have Pastor Scott Seiler. He is the first Vice President of the beloved South Dakota District. Thank you Pastor Edge. The Lord be with you. I bring you greetings and congratulations from our District President who happens to be in another Zion this afternoon at Zion Mitchell at an installation. So I bring you his greetings that of President Dale Satgast and of the congregations of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod in the South Dakota District, the other 108 congregations. Also bring you our thanks because not only are you a precious sister congregation to 108 congregations in our district, but you're also a mom. You are a mother congregation to several area congregations, including the congregation that I serve, Faith Lutheran, here in Sioux Falls. I want to share with you very briefly from our anniversary booklet from a few years ago. 
at Faith that uh, said something about Zion, and I hope I get all these German names right. But it talks about reaching out to the to East Sioux Falls, and there was a Reverend Gustav H. Stephan who was called to make a survey and canvas the area. And so Reverend Stephan, together with your pastor at the time, G.A. Tremo, and the Zion congregation began the work of establishing a congregation. The new mission which was established, Faith Lutheran Mission, was to be a daughter of Zion. The following members of Zion were granted letters of transfer to Faith, to faith Mission. George Bashy, Charles Burke, E.H. Depoltz, Herman Mailing, William Rao, Ernest Recker, Theodore Stolle, Ernest Wilde, Herbert Zimmel, William Zimmel, Ralph Goss, Harry Jones, Elvina Preuss, Thomas R. Scott, Jenny Vanderberg, and families. And so it went, and a mission was built at Fourth and Cliff. Thank you. Thank you from our congregation. But thank you also for the leadership of Zion, and especially several of your members in the creation of Main Street Living and of that TV ministry's ongoing operation. And I suspect we have a uh, Main Street Living camera right there. Main Street Living has been continues to be a blessing to so many viewers every Sunday, and so much credit goes to Zion Lutheran Church, so thank you. Thank you also for your work among the Sudanese in Sioux Falls, and especially to, to Pastor Gatnor for his work. And thank you for your partnership in the operation of Lutheran High School of Sioux Falls, a growing ministry in our wonderful city. So our prayers are with you as you move forward at age 125. You know, that's not too old an age, not for a congregation which has its eyes fixed on Jesus and whose eyes are at the same time also looking out into a world so desperate for the grace and hope that Jesus has come to bring. God bless you as you continue to proclaim that, that grace and that hope here near and far. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Seiler. I invite the congregation to rise for the benediction. These words, first spoken by Aaron to Israel, are fitting for us also today. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen, amen. and amen. We sing together how great thou art.
At Zion, we are committed to reaching out, strengthening the saved, and serving Jesus Christ by serving others.